why, why do I feel the, uh, the desire to start a YouTube channel? Well, there's a few reasons, and I've tried to write them down on this fine piece of paper, and we'll see uh, if I remember them all and if there's any others I add to it, but we'll start with this. One, I have been in a kind of bit of a quiet place over the last few years. I used to be a lot more outspoken about my faith and a lot more outspoken about my beliefs, and maybe I was a little too outspoken and a little too confident and maybe even arrogant, and uh, it cost me a little bit. And so I decided to shut down, kind of go into learning mode and get into book reading mode. I used to hate reading, but I decided to pick up books and read as much as I could because I wanted to learn and I wanted to become my own individual person and I wanted to understand my own thoughts and my own beliefs and form my own opinions about things. And so I decided I was going to spend a lot of time reading and learning. And I started going to a new church with my girlfriend, now wife, and, um, the pastors were a lot more involved in, in my life. It was a lot smaller of a church. It allowed for more opportunity there for me to just sit and learn instead of be so busy with ministry and with trying to speak and do whatnot. And so uh, I was in that season for quite a few years. And now I'm coming to a place where I'm starting to regain my confidence to speak. I'm finding new value in my own words and thoughts and expressions of them. And I want to express myself, I guess you can say. Uh, hopefully this time, as opposed to years ago, with a bit more humility, a bit more uh, learning, a bit more knowledge, a bit more uh, God, uh, God-led um Humility would be probably the best way of putting it. I, I, I want to be uh, fearful of my ideas and careful of what I say. With that being said, I have a lot of thoughts and ideas that I want to test, that I want to see whether they actually hold water or not. I am on the pursuit of truth, and on the pursuit of truth, you have to make mistakes and you have to believe things that are foolish and I'm not afraid to be a fool in front of other people. If I say something and it is very dumb and I don't know that, well, maybe if I say it out loud and everyone reacts in a way that says, you're being dumb, Daniel, then maybe I'll realize that my thought is dumb or I'm not expressing it right. Either, either way, it becomes an opportunity for me to learn and an opportunity for me to either change that thought or better my communication. And so YouTube becomes a, a way that I can express these ideas and see whether they hold water or whether I am thinking foolishly, at which point I hope you will tell me that I am doing so. Another reason why I want to uh, start a YouTube channel is because I got my bachelor's degree in philosophy. Now, a philosophy degree is not the most practical uh, college degree. I could have gone for, or maybe not I could have, but if you go for something like a business degree or maybe a mechanical engineering degree, there's a very clear cut path for what you can do and how that fits into a, a career in which you can make money from. Philosophy on the other hand, what am I going to do with that? I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved studying philosophy and I do find it incredib uh, incredibly practical for my life and incredibly helpful for where I want to go in the future, but it's not an incredibly uh, uh, easy skill to monetize. My grand skill that I got out of college was critical thinking. So what do I do with that, right? How do you monetize critical thinking? How do you uh, make a career out of critical thinking, right? Do you teach? Do you write books? on philosophy, on the history of philosophy? I don't really want to do that. But I got a really good skill, so theoretically, I could be a very good critical thinker. I know how logic works. I know what fallacies are. I know the history of ideas. So if I hear an idea, I can connect it with other ideas in history and the critiques to those ideas. So theoretically, the I, I've been provided with a skill set that allows for better critical thinking. Whether I use it or not is another thing. But I feel that through YouTube, I can perhaps 
use my critical thinking as uh, as a way to um, give uh, of my skill set to others in a way that uh, might be helpful. Maybe that's arrogant. Uh, maybe I'm not a big fan of putting out uh, answers, but maybe just asking good questions. And I think I ask questions that are helpful, at least in my own life, and maybe they could be helpful for other people. Uh, what's another reason? Mm, I think that verbal processing is a very good way of working out your own uh, beliefs and ideas and it gives you the opportunity to grow. So I want to grow, I want to pursue truth, and sometimes when you're thinking about an, an idea and it's just rattling around in your brain and you can't really get it out and you can't really get over the idea, sometimes you just need to say it and when you say it, it becomes an opportunity for you to think through it more clearly. And so I think in being able to speak my ideas out, I will have the chance to process my ideas better. And so in a sense, this is also for my own personal growth as well. Now, uh, I'm not done with school. I got my degree in philosophy, my minor in communication studies, and I'm working on a Master's of Divinity at my local Baptist seminary. A Master's of Divinity, if you don't know, it's a degree that equips you for um, Christian ministry. Particularly, in my case, what I'm pursuing is pastoral ministry or something of the, of the like. I'm, I'm still working out the kinks there, right? But I'm studying theology, I'm studying biblical studies, I'm studying Hebrew, Greek, church history, Christian counseling, ministry finances, uh, teaching and whatnot, right? So I am being equipped with these skills and I want to use them. I want to let them out, right? Uh, if you just keep putting ideas into your head and not having an outflow for those ideas, they kind of grow stagnant and you forget them. And so I don't want to do, I don't want to forget what I'm learning. I don't want to uh, make no use of what I'm learning. I want to make good use of what I'm learning. So I want to use it that way. I can continue to grow in what I'm learning and I can be better equipped at what I want to do in the future. And I take my degree very seriously now. I'm not just trying to pass classes, right? I want to get the most out of my classes and out of the books that we're reading so that I am the best equipped I can be to go into pastoral ministry, into Christian ministry. I take it incredibly seriously. Uh, but right now, I am reading a lot of books um, whether it's four classes or whether it's just supplemental reading that I've assigned myself to go along with the subjects I'm studying or whether it's philosophy or just uh, historical literature that I find is very influential in thought that I want to study, that I want to learn from. And so I'm reading a lot of books. I'm taking in a lot of ideas. I'm trying to process through a lot of ideas. Maybe uh, these ideas, which I'm learning in school, are helpful for other people. I mean, I would hope so, right? If I'm being taught these so that they will better me as a potential future minister, then uh, you would hope that I'm learning things that are helpful to the Christian life and to church life. So with what I'm learning, maybe I can let some of it out and let you in on some of what it is that I'm learning. And I think I'm in a unique scenario in that case, right? The, the questions you would ask a pastor are different than the questions you would ask a brand new Christian and are different than the questions you would ask uh, a student. And uh, I am placed in a unique scenario as uh, a Baptist uh, evangelical seminarian, right? And I love critical thinking, which means I like not just believing the things that I'm taught on the forefront, but I like asking questions. I'm always the student in classrooms to ask really dumb questions and sometimes good ones because if I am paying to learn and I have unanswered questions, I am going to ask them so that I can get my money's worth out of this class. So I know different students are different in different classroom settings and whatnot, but for me in almost all of my classroom settings thus far, 
I like to engage as much as possible with the teacher and ask as many questions as uh, I feel is fruitful for myself and for others. And so if I can do that and those questions are helpful for others, then so be it, right? I want to get a lot out of this degree. And I think the things that I'm learning and thinking through and questioning might be helpful for other people to think through as well. So accuse me of being arrogant there, but I think the questions I ask can help you grow. And so for that reason, I also find that what I'm doing is not just in a selfish vein, but can also be fruitful for uh, Christian thinkers, for church life, for skeptics who are thinking about Christianity and the whatnot. So those are some reasons. There's probably others out there. Um, but, uh, oh, wait, one more, one more reason. Uh, I, I'm a doer. I, when I get an idea in my head, I want to run with it and I want to do it. Uh, for a while, I thought that I was going to be an NBA, um, player. And, uh, what do you know? I'm five foot eight, right? I don't have the best jump shot in the world. I'm not very fast. I'm not, you know, it didn't turn out in, in a way, uh, that I became a successful basketball star, right? I just didn't. But when I was in that moment, uh, when was it? In middle school, high school era, I really wanted to pursue that. And so I pursued that. And that's part of my personality is that I really just take something that I'm in love with at the moment and I run with it. And uh, towards uh, my junior, senior year of high school, I started really getting into hip hop and rap. And I started writing my own raps with my best friend and recording those raps and putting them out on YouTube and SoundCloud. And uh, I learned how to mix my own vocals and master my own vocals. They didn't turn out into anything great, right? Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, I didn't become a rap star all of a sudden, but it was something I wanted to try out. And I felt something within me that did not not want to do that. I, I felt a need to do it. And so I just did. And uh, that's kind of just been my personality. Um, I like setting tasks for myself and running with them and trying to grow in them as much as possible. And the things you learn uh, from those individual things don't just stay compartmentalized to those. The things I learned trying to pursue a rap career and a basketball career uh, have grown me in other ways that were unexpected. And so uh, with these thoughts I'm having and that I want to get out and express, uh, I have a, a, a creative outlet and a creative brain that wants to run with an idea and I have an entrepreneurial spirit in some sense, a very American spirit. And so I want to take my idea and run with it. And if I crash and burn, I crash and burn, but I want to say that I've tried. I mean, it's cool even now that I'm retired from my rap career to be able to tell people, hey, yeah, I used to rap. I have a mixtape out. I have a few EPs out and you can go listen to them if you want. I try not to push people in that direction because I don't think my music turned out all that great, but I can say that I did it. And so for that reason, I can also say, I kind of want to do a YouTube slash podcast and I want to go with it and see where it goes. One last reason I just remembered. This can be a way of recording my own thoughts process, uh, my own thoughts, my own processing, my own growth, uh, the ideas I was thinking through, uh, one day I do hope to write a book, perhaps, and I want to have a way of recording my growth and thinking and the, 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 the growth of my philosophy and my worldview. And so these uh, videos that I'm making can be a way that I record the history of my own thoughts. And uh, I used to journal a lot. And I would write all these ideas down and stuff them in books and I can always go back and pull them out off my shelf and re reopen them and, and look through them and find what it is that 10 year old me was thinking about. And I'm not all the, mo uh, all the, the most proud of the things I was all, always thinking about, but I have a record of who I was and where I was at in life. And I think that's really cool. So this is also a way for me to create uh, my own history book of my own life that I can look in on and see and peer into what it was I was thinking and doing. Ergo. So 
uh, here we are. We're running with it. It's 2023, it's beginning of January. Uh, we're going to uh, start recording videos of books I'm reading and maybe movies I'm uh, watching and ideas I'm thinking through, maybe scripture and interpretation. We'll see where it goes. But I have ideas and I want to run with it and see where it goes. So bear with my bad audio and my bad video recording and we'll see if we can uh, improve that as well.